Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will be explaining about the further classification of Kingdom Animalia. Now, what is Kingdom Animalia? Let us see. All living organisms were classified into five kingdoms by Robert Whittaker. Now, what are those five kingdoms? The five kingdoms are first, Kingdom Monera, which includes all prokaryotic organisms such as bacteria. Second kingdom is Kingdom Protista, which includes all eukaryotic and unicellular organisms such as amoeba and euglena. Third kingdom includes fungi. These are, uh, uh, these are the organisms which are eukaryotic, multicellular, they show presence of cell wall, but chlorophyll is absent, such as mushroom, molds, fungus, etc. Fourth kingdom is kingdom plant A, which includes all the green plants. Those are eukaryotic, multicellular, and shows presence of cell wall. And since they have chlorophyll present, they are autotrophic. And fifth Kingdom is Kingdom Animalia, which includes all the animals or all the organisms that are eukaryotes. They are eukaryotic, multicellular, and they show absence of cell wall. That is, cell wall is absent. And they are heterotrophic. That is, they depend for food on other organisms. Now, to understand this particular five kingdom classification in a better way, you can check my previous video of classification of living organisms. Now in this video, I am going to further classify Kingdom Animalia. Now this further classification we'll understand in detail. Now we know that there are so many varieties of living things, right? These varieties include organisms or animals which are found in uh, water, which are found in land, which are found in air, that is aerial organisms. These organisms are different in their shape, their size, their structure. Everything is different. Where they live is different. What they eat is different. Now, these animals, although they are very different from each other, but just now we saw they have some similarity. So on the basis of similarity and differences, we will further classify animal kingdom animalia. And what is this further classification? That is what we have to understand. So let us start with the further classification of kingdom animalia. Now, kingdom animalia or classification of animal is done into two types on the basis of backbone. So, animals are further classified into two types on the presence or absence of backbone. Backbone, which is also called as vertebral column, into invertebrates and vertebrates. Invertebrate includes animals without backbone and vertebrate includes animal with backbone. These invertebrates, now invertebrates like an example insects, we can take an example of insect, earthworm, cockroaches, etc., jellyfish, liver fluke, sponges, etc. Now these organisms are further classified into nine phylums. Whereas vertebrates, which includes all the organisms that has vertebral column or backbone, such as dog, cat, fish, birds, amphibians, etc. Now, vertebrate is also further classified. How are these classification done? Let us see. The first one, that is invertebrate. Let us classify invertebrate into phylum. Invertebrate is classified into nine phylum, and the nine phylum are phylum porifera, polinterata, which is also called as nadaria. Third phylum is platyhelminths. Fourth is eschelminths, which is also called as nematoda. Fifth phylum is Annelida, sixth Arthropoda, seventh Mollusca, eighth Echinodermata, and ninth Hemichordata. So these are the these are the nine phylums of invertebrates. Vertebrates are classified into phylum Chordata, and phylum Chordata is further classified into five classes, and the classes are Physis, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. Now, this classification is done on the basis of similarity and differences. This classification, which I will be explaining in this video, is as per ICSE grade 7 syllabus. Now, in this video, I will be explaining the four phylum of invertebrates, that is Porifera, Polinterata, Pladihelminthes, and Eschelminthes. Let us understand the characteristic of organism in each phylum. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell icon. So let us begin. 
the first phylum which includes porifera which is porifera now porifera means pori means pores porifera includes all the organism or all the animals which are pore bearing they have many minute pores on their body they have very simple body design they just have a sing, simple body or they just have a tube like body with many pores on them and these smaller pores which are present you can see in this picture there are many minute pores on their body and these minute pores which we see are called as ostea there is one large opening at the free end so if you see this organism they have many pores in the body many small pores in the body but one large opening at the free end and this large opening is called as osculum or oscula osculum is the plural term oscula is the singular term now through this ostia that is through minute pore water enters see what is their body have just a tube like structure with many pores okay through these pores water enters in and water moves out through the larger pore that is osculum and when this water is flowing in the body nutrients are absorbed from the water and waste material is excreted this is how they're simple or simple this is a simple body design now these organisms are called as sponges since they have many pores present on the body they are also called sponges these are aquatic mostly they are marine animal but few are also found in fresh water they are non motile that is they cannot move so they are attached to the fixed support and the fixed support is either at the bottom of the ocean or any object which is floating or which is present in the ocean or any water body so this is all about the porifera porifera includes pore bearing organism that is they have many pores on their body smaller pores are called ostia one large opening is called as osculum through ostia water enters and through osculum water moves out they are these include organisms which are also called as sponges okay so these are the characteristic important characteristic of kingdom porifera next kingdom is uh, sorry next king phylum is collenterata which is also called as nidaria now this particular phylum includes organism or animals which has a hollow sac like body with only one opening this is not like the porifera porifera had many opening but collenterata have only single opening that is one opening which is called as mouth they are mostly found in sea water whereas very few are found in fresh water now their body is radially symmetrical now what is this radial symmetry means radial symmetry means they have cylindrical body which if cut in any plane it will give two equal half so it is called as radial symmetry okay like an example it is like bottle what the bottle okay cylindrical bottle so if we cut it in any plane vertically any plane it will always give two equal half so this is called as radial symmetry now their mouth is surrounded by many thread like structure now this thread like or hair like structure which you see are called tentacles these tentacles are used by these organism either to capture food or to swim that is they will capture food using this tentacle and also it is used by them as a defense mechanism that is to kill their enemies okay so this is all about the characteristic of phylum collenterata so phylum collenterata you have to remember there is only one opening which is called as mouth they are hollow sac they have hollow sac like body okay next is example we'll take example example includes hydra first diagram is of hydra second we can see is jellyfish and third the animal so these are the types of animals included in phylum collenterata now the third phylum is platyhelminthes platy platy means flat and helminth means worm so they have they this particular phylum includes flat worms let us see the characteristic so they have thin and leaf like or ribbon like flat body so they are called as flat worms example example is liver fluke and another example is tapeworm now these organisms are mostly endoparasite now let us understand what is this endoparasite what does parasite means parasites are the organism that absorbs nutrient from their host example example tapeworm tapeworm enters in the body of animals such as human and they absorb nutrient from their host animal that is human okay so they are called parasite so parasites are the organism that absorbs nutrient 
and the organism from which they are absorbing nutrient that is human will be called host so these this particular bloody helminth includes endoparasite now why are we calling it as endo endo because it is entering in the body and absorbing the digested nutrient from our body okay so these are the characteristic of bloody helminth example you have to remember example is liver flu and second example is tape worm now the fourth phylum is nematoda nematoda or it is even called eschelminthes if you see third phylum included flatworms flat ribbon like body they have okay nematoda includes round worm they have cylindrical body cylindrical body and so they are called as round worm so they have long thin thread like unsegmented now what is this unsegmented unsegmented means they have soft body smooth body they don't have body like earthworm so we call it as unsegmented earthworm if we know earthworm has many small segments in their body so they have segment so if segments are absent small segments are absent then we call it as unsegmented so nematoda includes body they have body which is long thread like and unsegmented so they are called as round worm they are mostly free living and some are even endoparasite just now i explained you the term endoparasite free living that is they live freely in environment they don't absorb nutrient from host okay example of endoparasite is ascaris and this ascaris is the uh, worm which is also called as round worm which is found in the intestine of human so this particular worm is responsible for uh, loose motions and uh, vomiting in children now this particular worm enters in the body through contaminated food and water so if they enter in the body through contaminated food and water they will they will live in intestine and they will absorb the digested nutrient from the human body so they are called endoparasite so this is all about the phylum nematoda so in this video i have explained you about the four four phylum of invertebrates first was phylum porifera pori that is pores many pores are present on their body example sponges second phylum was collinterata they have hollow sac like body example was hydra jellyfish etc and third we studied was platyhelminthes they have flat ribbon like body example includes liver flu tapeworm and fourth we did was nematoda which includes round worm example is ascaris in the next video i will explain further about other phylums of invertebrates as well as vertebrates thank you very much